Hello everybody, how are you all doing on this? <laughs> well anyway, here, a rainy Sunday afternoon. I know it's been a while since I've done a Let's Play video. But I actually have a video camera now, so hopefully everything goes a lot smoother than it did the last time. We are going back to doing L.A. Noir, finishing it up. Okay, we're going to keep this short. I'm already late for the DA. First up, Phelps, Pikowski. We've got a report of a brand new Packard abandoned in an empty lot off 2nd Street between Olive and Grand. BR is one Oswald Jacobs says the vehicle was dumped in his backyard. There's a patrolman on site. Get down there and see what you can turn up. Any questions? Good. Get going. Better go earn our pathetic wages. Rinsky, O'Halloran, intelligence. No. Has information on a stolen car rack. An abandoned vehicle. You can't tell them the good ones, no, no. Sounds like there's more to it than that. Nobody dumps a shiny new pack unless they borrowed it without asking. You don't say. You're on fire, you know. Okay. Very funny. Huh. Come on, man. That's a very good Let's go see if we go. There we go. There we go. That's the suit I prefer anyway. Alright. Now like I said, I know it's been a while since I've uh, done any Let's Play videos, but what I'll do is before I post this one to social media, I will go ahead and repost the other one. The other, uh, the first video of the first traffic case. You hear about Adrian? Across in Seattle, threw him out. Wife says she's gonna take him back. Women generally show more compassion. What are you talking about? Adrian dumped on her. He was humping the secretary. Margaret should just be right. Probably comes before a fall, Mikowski. Now one thing to remember about when you're investigating the crime scene is you want to look for the little placards. I'll show you in a second Phelps, what I mean. Traffic. Officer Houlihan. Cars down the alleyway, detectives. We got a call about an abandoned vehicle. Yes, sir. The car has flags. Might be some kind of diplomatic vehicle. Has anyone touched this vehicle since you arrived? No. And that Jacob's bird over there was on station before I got here. We'll talk with him in a moment. Give us some time to look the place over. Sure, take your time. He's a sore-headed old son of a bitch anyway. And yes, after hearing that, let me remind everybody that uh, who's just watching these videos for the first time, there is cursing, violence, and at one point, a minor bit of nudity. But, <clears throat> being that it's a police, uh, by the Argentinian embassy. A game about 1947 detect uh, police. It's uh, it's well as tasteful as you could get. It's nothing gratuitous. So, but anyway, and like I was saying about I was saying about the placards. Whenever you're in an area and you're looking at clues, looking for clues, you want to look for the little placards on the ground. You see A there by the door and be there at the front of the car. You, the trick is, sometimes that's not all the relevant clues. Generally those will signify what the relevant clues are, but in this case is one of them. There's sometimes where an actual clue isn't marked oh, by marked by a placard. Like for, if I can do it, there we go. The flags. Wasn't well, marked by a placard, but it's a clue. You gotta be really careful, and you gotta listen for that ding ding uh, tone. Like when I walk in front of the car here, listen for it. it. Whenever you hear that, that's a clue, but it may or may not be relevant. Like I said, the placards generally indicate if it is. Stealing the wheels is for amateurs. Our ring would have stripped it in a warehouse. Yeah, this guy shot. In fact, what's he got to say? What you got to say, huh? Give me some room, huh? 
I have to get this done. There's one. Combination wrench. I must have used it to remove the wheel box. And that little tone means you found all the relevant clues in the area at the moment. Go ahead and talk to this Oswald guy. Oswald Jacobs? That's right. What exactly happened here, Mr. Jacobs? Last night, I was looking out of my window. I like to keep an eye on what's going on. I can understand that. You see this empty lot? Damn kids play stickball here. Always breaking my windows. Always asking for their ball back. Can we get back to the car, Mr. Jacobs? Don't be impatient, Sonny. Anyway, last night I see this brand spanking new Packard up on bricks. Now, of course, we're going to ask him questions, but you've got to watch his reactions when he answers, or when any of them answer, and determine if they're telling the truth, if you think there's some doubt to what they say, or if they're lying. Did you see who stole the Packard? Hell yes, I did. I saw three goddamn Mexicans going to work on it. Seems to be telling the truth. Can you tell us what they were doing? Using the headlights of an old Ford so they could strip the thing. I yelled out to them, I'll call the cops. So they loaded up their car and drove off, tooting and hollering and yelling obscenities at me in Mexican. You speak Spanish, sir? No, I do not. After the uh, Mexicans left, you didn't go anywhere near the car? After I scared them off? No, I didn't go anywhere near that car. A little too obvious, right? You went out to the car. Once they were gone, you had to take a look for yourself. I was curious. Ain't a law against that. So what if I took a look around that car? You can't be accusing me of nothing. Tell me about the car they were driving. It was an old Ford. <clears throat> I didn't catch the license number. Seems to be on the up and up. And that's the thing. You look like the kind of guy who notices details. You're right there. The car was old, but it looked brand new. Candy apple red pink chop stands out a mile. That's the thing, you gotta remember. If you ha if they if you think they're lying, if you ask them a question, and you're like, mm, I think you're lying, you can always check your evidence and look at all the different clues you've found so far to determine if they are telling if they are actually lying. If you think they're lying but don't have proof, go with doubt. What exactly did you see them take? They was working on the tires. That's all that was took. See, you can tell he's lying, but we have no proof, so, and he's obviously not telling the truth, so we gotta right. doubt. So what did you take, Jacobs? You want my partner to pat you down? I found a notebook in the glove compartment. I was gonna show you. It's on the chair on my porch. Thank you for your help, Mr. Jacobs. You can speak to Officer Thibault about signing a formal statement. When you get the car out of the way, Maybe you could come back and do something about those kids. Well, how about we bring you an umpire's mask? <laughs> what a character, right? <clears throat> okay, so we have the owner of the vehicle, a degenerate. I'll run John Madsen by R and I. Contact details on a billion Dewey. Oops. This looks like business rather than pleasure. Okay. Hang on to that. And I think we've run this place dry. Let's find a game well. And now, once again, we've found a, uh, all the relevant clues. Stick ball. Hmm. Good 
Game one. Connects you directly to police dispatch. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, detective? We would run the name Dewey Brothers. Possibly a dealership or car mechanics workshop. One moment. Dewey Brothers Packard Dealership, 629 Figueroa Street. Got it. Can you put me through to Michigan 2458, please? Connecting you now. Hello, can I help you? LAPD, ma'am. Can I speak to John Madsen, please? He's at school, officer. Uh, what's this about? Is he in trouble? How old is your boy, ma'am? Just turned 16. Wrong person, Mrs. Madsen. Sorry to disturb you. Messages, please. There's just one message for you, Detective. A four-door Packard, diplomatic license number, Paul Robert 706, was reported missing this morning by Juan Francisco Valdez. Should you have him brought in? He's already here at Central, Detective. He's demanding an audience, as he calls it. Thanks. Can you get a message to Captain Leary? Tell him we'll be in as soon as we can. Thank you. Can you cordon off this lot until we have the vehicle impounded? Yes, sir, Detective. We'll follow up on the owner. Get a statement from Jacobs, and I'll read your report back at the station. We can visit the Packard dealership or head back to Central and interview this Valdez character. Your call. Now, the thing is, it's given me the choice here. But one thing you got to remember for the future cases, when it does that, <clears throat> there is a correct order. I mean, you could do it in whatever order you want, but you risk, run the risk of, excuse me, you run the risk of uh, missing out on a potentially important clue or piece of evidence. So, this has got to be the 50th abandoned vehicle call we have caught this year. One more and I'm going to go crazy. Not your favorite cases? Are you kidding me? This is barely even police work. All the bad guys in this city, we get lumped with the ones who can't even be bothered to keep what they steal. So, in, uh, in this case, like I said, there is an important, there's an order. To get the five, to get a five-star perfect rating at the end of the mission, at the end of the case. In this one, you don't have. It's really a matter of you go to Dewey Brothers or do you go to the police station to interview Valdez. You can go either to either one first. It doesn't really matter, but I'm not going to spoil why. But for the purpose of this, we'll go to Dewey Brothers. That's what I always did anyway. Yeah, I know. I just went up on the sidewalk. You were making your way past the lot, caught sight of the new model four-door, and couldn't help yourself. You could see yourself in that car and just had to take a closer look. Well, I can't say as I blame you. <laughs> LAPD, Mac. We'd like to speak with the owner. That's me, William Dewey, proprietor at your service. We're investigating the theft of a Packard belonging to the Argentine Embassy. Are you missing a combination wrench? I don't know, detective. But I know how we can find out. Follow me. Doesn't this guy just scream shyster? I mean, it's almost insulting. But then again, as I said, as I said before, I believe if I didn't, I apologize. I'll say it now. We keep all our tools in here. This game is incredibly accurate in terms. Be my guest. 
in terms of the uh, you sure you guys aren't interested in a new in car? terms of the culture no? of the way car. things I were back then the way people acted dressed and so on and so forth the shysters uh, give us some alone time do we go sell some cars or whatever Use. Nope, not there. Not there. Too small. That's not right. There we go. Particularly dangerous if the nails are pointing pointy end out first, anyway. No. Come on, down. There we go. Okay. There. One left. Which means. Boom. There we go. Gabriel Delgado is missing a three-quarter. As you know, now that's the only relevant thing we have to do here, but you can hear the music is still going. So keep in mind, sometimes it will. doesn't mean you're forgetting something. Anyway, let's go talk to Dewey and see what he has to say. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Packards are great cars, but this doesn't look like the kind of place favored by foreign embassies. How do you know about this? I don't know Valdez. The embassy bought the car. All I know is he must know a quality car when he sees one. Right, that's why. And I know a shyster when I see one. You and Valdez are in this together. Me and Valdez? I hardly know him. Valdez wouldn't wipe his shoes with me. Which is why, in Valdez's notebook, he has a contact number for William Dewey. We found your contact details in Valdez's notebook. He had to be calling you for something, Dewey. Okay. So I met Valdez in a bar. We cut a deal. He bought the car through the embassy. I cut him some change on the side. It happens all the time. The thing is, it generally did. Where can we find Delgado? I don't know. Sure as hell isn't here. <laughs> yeah, he's telling the truth. Address, Dewey, where my partner shoves her head in a car door. Okay, all right. Apartment 3103 Hill Street. And tell him from me, if he ever shows his face around here again, I'm going to kick his butt from here to kingdom come. A wrench from this dealership was used to strip the wheels from a Packard last night, Mr. Dewey. A couple of Hispanics were seen taking parts. We've had a spate of thefts ourselves. Comes with the location. Be the bastard to steal anything the minute your back is turned. What are you hiding, Dewey? Spill it! You don't want the LAPD getting too interested in this place. So I hire a few illegals. It's cheaper than hiring and returning GIs, and they have less attitude. Downside is, they're a little light for you. Thank you for your help, Mr. Dewey. No problem. God damn that kid. Hey. I'm just an honest car salesman. Seems <laughs> like you just don't know who you can trust these days. <laughs> Going to movies, Dewey, you're missing your calling. There's no such thing as an Back honest Gabriel Delgado. car salesman. Especially back in the 1940s. We'll go ahead and go to the police station now and interview uh, Valdez. Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? Police station. Where else? the story in the examiner about the Navy developing three-dimensional movies? What's a dimension? You know, like a graph. Vertical axis is Y, horizontal is X. Well, that's clear as mud. The third dimension would be Z. So, things would be popping out of the screen. That's ridiculous. You scare people out of the theater. God's name would want that. I don't know. People stop the color. Look what we have now. And yes, that was almost a shot. That was kind of a ha 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 playful jab. Because, think about it, that's exactly what we have right now. 3D movies. Francisco Valdez in the place.
question. Sure do, Phelps. Your bird's an interview, too. And get this, he's wearing gloves and doing his best not to touch them. Can you beat that? Sounds like we don't want to keep this guy waiting. It's this way. All right. Get out of the way. Right. About time. Are you the senior officer I requested? I'm Detective Phelps, and this is Detective Kowski. Have you any idea how long I've been waiting to speak with you? I am needed back at the consulate, and you keep me here like a common criminal. All right, friend. Let's take a deep breath and start all over again. Mr. Baldez, Counsel General. I insist on my food title. <laughs> I'm sorry. People like that just make me laugh. It's like, really? They, they're they so full of themselves and they themselves think they're that important that they have to... Anyway. All right. Next one. Where did you purchase the car? My secretary and driver arranged the purchase. A disreputable place. A Dewey Brothers, by name. As soon as I can have it arranged, I will have my Hispano Suiza brought up from Buenos Aires. Mm-hmm. Why about this? You made the arrangements for the car. Call the embassy. I decided the color and model it was not involved in the transaction. Right. Ya basta! I will stand no more of this. Wow. Um... Okay. Consul General, we have located your car. Can you tell us how it was stolen? It must have been stolen from the council garage. Terribly inconvenient, of course. I want the perpetrator soundly flogged. Unfortunately, we don't do that here, Your Worship. I think you know who stole the car and why they stole it, Valdez. How dare you! If I was a younger man, I would demand satisfaction. What evidence do you have that links me to the thief? 